Good afternoon sir, good afternoon classmates. I am Faiza Salisip and I am going to discuss the history of Sepak Takraw. Sepak Takraw is a well-known sport in Southeast Asian countries. So, ang Sepak Takraw is most popular or pinakakilala siya sa Southeast Asian countries. So, ang mga bansa na kabilang sa Southeast Asia is 11 at ito ay Brunei, Myanmar, Cambodia, East Timor, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. So since most popular or pinakakilala siya sa Southeast Asia, so may iba't ibang tawag sila sa Sepak Takraw, such as Sepak Raga in Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore. While Khao Mei Lin in Vietnam, Katao in Laos, Takrao in Thailand, Rago in Indonesia, Chinlon in Myanmar, Sekda in Cambodia, and lastly, Sipa in the Philippines. Sepak Takrao is a combination of two different words from two different languages. So, ang Sepak Takrao na word is nagmula siya sa dalawang magkaibang lingwahe. Wherein, sepak is a Malay or Malaysian word which means to kick, while takraw is a Thai word for woven rattan ball. Therefore, sepak takraw can be translated as to kick a rattan ball or simply kick ball. The exact origin of sepak takraw are not precisely known. So, hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin alam kung saan talaga nagmula yung sepak takraw. But the general understanding is that the sport was introduced to Southeast Asia by the Chinese. It is believed to be introduced by the Chinese ang sepak takraw sa Southeast Asia dahil ang mga Chinese is merong sport or game na tinatawag na kuchu. Ang kuchu is an earliest form of modern soccer and ang kuchu is a military exercise of ancient China na kung saan ang mga sundalo is sumisipa sila ng leather ball between their co soldiers so yung way ng paglalaro ng kuchu is parang or similar din sa paglalaro ng sepak takraw so from kuchu dun nagsimula yung evolution ng sepak takraw so it is believed na inintroduce ng Chinese yung sepak takraw na game sa Southeast Asia dahil dun sa sport nila na kuchu historical records prove that Sepak Takraw was popular in Malacca Sultanate, modern-day Malaysia as early as 15th century. So, nagsimulang maging popular or maging kilala yung Sepak Takraw sa Malaysia during 15th century pa. And during 15th century, Sepak Takraw was mostly played by the royal court in Malaysia. And since naging popular yung Sepak Takraw sa Malaysia during 15th century, Mostly nilalaro lang ito ng mga royal family or royal clan sa Malaysia. Therefore, Sepak Takraw originated in Malaysia 500 years ago. And since it is originated in Malaysia, Sepak Takraw is Malaysia's national sport. So ang national sport ng Malaysia is Sepak Takraw. Furthermore, on 16th century, the game was spread across Indonesia. So, noong 16th century naman, na-spread na ang sepak takraw sport sa Indonesia at tinawag nila itong sepak raga. By 1940, the net version of the game was spread across Southeast Asia and the formal rules and regulations were formed or created for the sepak takraw game. Good afternoon everyone, especially to you sir. I am Faharna Sambad. Today, I'll be explaining the first tournament which is belong din siya sa history ng Sepak Takraw. So, the first official Sepak Takraw tournament was organized in Penang on May 16, 1945. Ngunit dahil sa kasikatan ng Sepak Raga, kumalat ito mula sa Penang at sa iba pang mga bansa. Tulad ng Keda, Kuala Lumpur at Singapore. Noong 1960 naman ay mas lalo pa itong sumikat sa buong bansa kaya naman nilaro ito sa, ng karamihan sa mga paaralang may mga badminton court. 
and in Thailand, the Sham Sports Association drafted the first rules for the sports in 1929. And in the year 1930s, it is believed that this association introduced a valuable type net to the game and organized the first public competition in 1933. Mas lalo pang sumikat at lumawak ang larong ito. Kaya naman ang volleyball style takraw ay naging parte ng celebrations sa Kingdom's First Constitution at nilaro nila ito during that celebration. Another thing is on March 25, 1956, Penang Sepak Raga Sponsors Committee was formed. So, ang committee na ito ay nag-usap-usap sila mula sa mga representative ng iba't ibang bansa, kabilang na ang Selangor, Negeri Simbilan, Keda at Singapore. To develop or establish a national level organization. Eventually, Malayan Sepak Raga Chairing Sponsors Committee was established on January 28, 1960. Furthermore, early Sepak Takraw rules and regulation were enacted in April 15 in Kuala Lumpur. And on June 25, nagkaroon ng meeting sa Penang at pinapangunahan ito ng Malaysian Sepak Takraw Association o mas kilala sa tawag na Malayan Sepak Raga Federation during that time. This meeting was presided over by Penang Chief Minister Wong Pony. Also during the meeting, Kier Juhari was appointed as the organization's first president and Hamid Maidin was acknowledged as the founder of modern Sepak Raga. Later in 1960, representatives from various countries such as Malayan, Singapore, Myanmar, and Thailand met in Kuala Lumpur to standardize the regulations of the sports at the international level. After the discussion, it was decided that the sport would be called Sepak Takraw. Asian Sepak Takraw Federation was formed in 1965. In the same year, the third Southeast Asian Peninsular Games or now as Southeast Asian Games were held in Kuala Lumpur and Sepak Takraw was included as a sport for the first time since then. The sports has been significant attraction in the Biennale Multi Sports event. In the year 1970, Asian Games held in Bangkok, Malaysia, and Thailand, they played an exhibition Sepak Takraw match. For the first time, Sepak Takraw was included as one of the medal sports in the Asian Games in 1990. And in year 1985, the first Ever King's Cup Sepak Takraw World Championship was organized in Thailand. This tournament has become the most prestigious international event in Sepak Takraw. It is held every year in Thailand and so far there are 34 editions have been organized. In year 1988, the International Sepak Takraw Federation was established. This was the first international governing body for the sports and was recognized by the Olympic Movement in 1990. The first International Sepak Takraw World Cup was held in 2011 in Kuala Lumpur for both men and women. The second World Cup took place in 2017 and the third edition is scheduled for this year 2022. Let proceed in rules and regulations of Sipak Takraw. But before I explain the rules and regulations of Sipak Takraw, I will explain first why do we need to follow the rules and regulations. It is very important to follow the rules and regulations of any games because rules are, are established to protect the weaker class in the society since they are at the 
disadvantaged if such regulations are broken. Especially when rules are properly set and followed, they provide a stable environment and human coexistence in a community that resulting in peace and order. The first rules and regulations of Sipaktakraw is teams consist of three members. In Sipaktakraw, players are allowed for a maximum of three contacts with the walls to gate it over the net. Second, startup place begins with a service. A coin toast will decide which start service, while the other rego can pick the side of court they wish to start on. By the way, the rego it means two teams. The third, the feeder will start the game by tossing the wall to the server. Then, the server will keep one foot within the serving circle and use his other foot to kick the ball fast the net. Fourth, players may only touch the ball with their feet, head, knees, and chest. Because touching the ball with the hand or any other part of the body can result in a fault and a point for the opposition or a point is awarded to the opposing team. Fifth, each team is allowed a maximum of three touches of the ball to return it back over the net without letting it touch the ground because when it hits the ground, it will be considered as fault. Second to the last, in rules and regulations of Sipakta Crow, there is a referee who may call faults or award point based on the scoring system. Basically, there is a referee in any game like volleyball, baseball, basketball, and other games because referees have a very important role to play in any game. Last part in rules and regulations of Sipakta Crow. The teams must use the Sipakta Crow ball for play. Ball. Considered as the most essential equipment of the game, the ball is spherical in the shape and usually made of the synthetic fiber. In some cases, a hand-woven layer is also used. Initially, the wall, the wall was made up of rattan strips which were gradually replaced by synthetic strip. Usually, the ball has a maximum weight of 170-180 gram for men and 150-160 to gram for Ang bola daw ang pinaka-importanteng equipment sa sip, larong sipak takraw at dati siyang made of rattan at pinalitan siya ng synthetic strips. So, 170 to 180 grams for men and 150 to 160 grams for um, shoes. The shoes used in the game are light in weight and have a fit side with soles. It has a good grip on both indoor and outdoor surface and has a sole inside for supporting the high impact of constant, constant jumping and landing. These are especially made for players to help them kick perfectly. So, sa shoes, ang gagamitin natin ay yung tama-tama lang ang bigat at tama-tama lang ang laki para komportable sa paglaro. Net. The net is used in the game is usually made of ordinary cord or nylon with 6 to 8 cm mesh and is usually heavier and strong than badminton net. So, um, ang net daw ay gawa sa nylon at may haba itong 6 to 8 cm at mas mabigat at mas matibay ito sa badminton net. Protective gear. In this game, usually ankle-supportive hands are used by players for providing protection as high jumping is involved throughout the game. Even neat tensors are also used by players in order to pre prevent joints and tendon injury. Some players use ankle gear for ankle support. Players also use forehead bandana bandanas in order to stop the sweat running into. So, ginagamit itong protective gear para pang support sa ankle, knee, and elbow para iwas injury. Good day, sir. My name is by Almira Sachi A. Sadik, and I will explain how to play Sipak Takraw. So, first is to 
set at the court. The court is rectangular and measures 13.4 meters and 44 feet by 6.1 meters. Approximately the same size as a badminton court. So the net is in the middle of the court and should be 1.52 meters high. A service circle should be drawn 3.05 meters from the back line and 2.45 meters from the sideline. Next is to assemble your team. Sipag Takraw is played with two teams called Rego and Mississauga. Each Rego has five total players and three players on the court and two substitute. Next is to know how to Sipag Takraw is score. When playing the Rego format, a match consists of three sets. A match is won when a team wins two sets. Each set is played to 21 points. So if example if a team the if a team does not win does not win two sets in a row the third set called the tie break only has 30 15 points next is to know the basic skills in sipak takraw you can touch the ball with your hands or arms arms that means you have to use your feet legs and knees to control the ball Although it takes a bit of agility and athleticism, there are some basic moves you can learn. Next is to learn the inside kick. The inside kick is probably the most important skills to learn because it's the one you will use the most. And this is used to control the ball. You can also use this kick for good spike. For example, for this kick, stand with feet shoulder with a part with your support leg bent at, and the knee hit the ball with with the inside of your dominant foot practice working practice working with both feet to get more agility and flexibility in your in your kicks so next is to learn the two kick the two kick is used to save the ball not control it extend your leg and let the ball bounce on your two or raise your leg in the if the ball is higher so this this should be executed slowly and and without power this is used when receiving the ball next is use the header the header is another skills for the game this kick uses the head your forehead at your hair and this is used when the ball comes at your at you above the waist and you will probably have to bend down to get under net the ball practice getting used to the feeling of the ball against your head because it can hurt and this is used in both serving and striking next is use the knee and tight kick this kick is used this kick is used when receiving the ball the the knee and tight kicks defle deflects the ball when it's coming towards you between your waist and knees by hitting the ball with your tight or knee your reputation the ball so you can use an inside kick and it's also used when the ball gets too close to your body next is to learn strike striking or spiking the ball send it over the over over the net and there are different ways to achieve this so first is to strike with the bottom of your feet after bouncing the ball into the air, kick your leg up into the air to about head height, then strike the ball with the bottom of your foot. So last is to use the chest and shoulders. So you can use any body part except the arms and hands when playing Sipak Takraw. You can use the chest and shoulders to bounce the ball off when trying to get it into proper play position. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kenny. This is Sandiga. Flip a coin. The team's captains call it whoever calls correctly gets to choice to go first. Call choosing service. Or choose the side they wish to be on call choosing side. Oh, serve the ball. The design team serve first. At the start of the match, the feeder and the striker stand in the quarter circle on their side of the court while the taekong stands 
with one foot inside the serving circle. Either the feeder or the striker tosses the ball to the tekong to start the match. He then kicks the ball up and over the net with the foot not in the serving circle. The other team can be anywhere in their court. The serving team gets a point if the ball touches the net and lands in the court. The team continues to serve each time. They are awarded a point. After the initial serve, all players are free to move around the court. Number 3. Pass the ball to the striker. To response to the serve, the defensive team will try to get the ball over the net within 3 touches of the ball. The takeoff and the feeder both move around the court to pass the ball to the striker with 1 to 2 touches. The striker will use the final third touch to send the ball over the net. Players can have more than one touch. Number 4. Pass the ball to the other team using only your feet and head. As play continues, the team cannot use their hands or arms. Each team has three touches to send the ball back over the net. Play continues until a team makes a fault. This occurs when the team doesn't return the ball over the net within three touches when the ball is not kicked before it hits the ground the net stop it from going to the other side of the court or it lands out of the bounds if a fault is made the other team scores when a team wins a, wins a point they get the next serve number five change the side of the court for a new set after one team gets to 21 or 25 points the set is over to start a new set the teams change side of the court the team that lose the previous set serves when a team wins two sets a new match is started